Hi YouTube, I hope you're doing good. I am tired. I had a horrible night to be honest. Um, Doug fell on the stairs last night face first and my hair was wet and he was yelling for me so I went out there and I tried to pick him up and, I, and because of my injured arm I couldn't get him up. So and then uh well, he called me up and said that I never did anything for him as I was trying to get him up. So I just closed the door and came back in. I was going to put a coat on or something. And um, I looked back out and he was able to get up. And it only had been about a minute or so. But I was thinking, what? well, what can I do besides um, call like the police or an ambulance or something you know if a person can't walk maybe it's time for a retirement home you know for real I can't lift him you know there's a time in my life maybe I could have but right now I can't and I had him kind of up but uh, anyway it was horrible so yeah, that's that's a major reason why I, um, although I hope for things to be well in our lives, I don't have any faith in that. I have faith in God, but as far as another human being, I'm never given my heart wholeheartedly. No, uh, -uh not in an in intimate relationship ever again. Never, never. So. Anyway, I hope he finds what he's looking for because I can't do it, you know. <clears throat> anyway, so <laughs> enough on that, I think. Um, I uh, watched a really good Lion on Nation this morning. It was so um, varying in, in what he talks about. It's hard to just pinpoint one thing. But it was about um, the art of distraction, you know, like what's going on in the world. But but there was so much more about it. He is a psychology major and a media analyst and an attorney, talented guy. He, well, he was in a movie too. If you um, let me see what um, House of Cards. So I haven't seen it. <laughs> I don't have ne Netflix or I, you know, I don't um, use uh, online, like buying movies or I, I don't have those capabilities, you know. It's like I was going to tell somebody if I ever do get rich, which maybe, never know. But I'd still probably just send you um, money in the mail instead of doing all the digital stuff, so. It's not that I have anything against it for for its capabilities and the coolness of that within itself. It's um, the least I can pay homage to what they want to do to everybody is what I'll do, you know, deal with cash until I can't, you know. So I don't know. <laughs> so just sec. Yeah, um, Doug had told me I could order some stuff online, so um, I was doing that. I don't know if it got ordered. I just showed him what I wanted, and um, but he said he spent like four hours getting things ready so he could do that, and I guess that gave him... Um, an excuse to be abusive I don't know but I can't prove it because you know and it is abusive so if I get pissed off in turn because you know you really and then it went on for uh too long after he did come in um and I can't prove it how do you do that but it was hard to sleep you know it's upsetting yeah it is you know 
that's why I decided to talk about it because yeah, it's embarrassing. It's not my shame, but you know, a lot of people would think, well, you know, a lot of people, and I do know this is a fact, even though they don't say it, it's like, what did you do to deserve being treated like that is how most people think, you know, and that's a fact. And whether I did or not, they don't care. That's their first assumption, you know. So, yeah, I don't know. No topic today that I know of, not really, you know. Then I uh, listened to another Lion Nation that I had listened to two months ago. But um, what exactly is marriage legally? And that's a good one. It's about a 17-minute video. And the other one that I'm going to share, that's a 38-minute video. So some of his stuff is a little bit longer, but these ones aren't. So, yeah. So anyway, I just ended up telling Doug I don't want anything from him. And um, this morning I said, maybe you want me to bring you the phone because I'm about ready to beat your ass. And he said he's already in enough pain. Yeah, wow. But I really did want to kick his ass. I had thoughts of it like three, four times this morning. And I just had to um, keep my mind busy in other ways. I did housework and just kept busy while he slept. So, um, I didn't do anything drastic because I really did think about it a couple times. Well, like I said, no, I said three, four, it was four. So, no. Three, actually, until just now. So, yeah, four all together. So, yeah, hopefully God will keep me safe because this thing is volatile to be around, you know. He probably needs a man in his life, somebody that can lift it at ass when he's down there like that, because this isn't the first time. This has happened a lot in my life, and I'll hear him yelling out in the yard or in the shop or different times. And I go running out there and I got to like pick him up and drag him. It's his bad back or something. Or or it's uh, last night it was the evil forces. And that's been a big one lately that um, the witches and it's evil and all this, you know. It's like, yeah, okay. I know what that's all about. Oh, yes, I did have a topic today. Just a minute. I'll, I'll tell you what was on my mind. I wonder if you're married to a narcissist and it may, may be on the other side of the world or in my same country. I wonder if they're all crappy at the same time, like, is it a planetary thing or a time of day? Or do they take turns and feed off like a good person's energy and share it with the rest, the vultures like that? What do you think? Give, give me your opinion, please. If, if you had similarities on the same day, this might be a significant thing. We might be able to, like, maybe um, stop it a little more from happening to all of us because I'm not the only one. I'm just living with the head gang stalker of it all. That's all. But I'm not, not nearly, I mean, there's millions of people that suffer at the hands of narcissists. A lot of them are your own parents, and then you don't realize when you meet somebody, when you've been around real, real horror, and then you meet somebody that isn't 
quite as horrible. That seems more pleasant to you. And you might be accepting things that something that's not ingrained in you, but you're accepting it, you know. And whether or not we forgive a person has absolutely nothing to do with it because um, usually in most people's hearts, that's a given. But consequences of what people do is real and, and human emotions are real. And to say, you know, so I could say, well, I didn't like what you do. And was I angry when I wanted to beat him up? Not really. No, I just want him to learn a lesson. And I guess really, if I had wanted to, really wanted to, I would have. I mean, I struggle with these thoughts, you know. And that's why I'm documenting it, because... I have no way to protect myself if this piece thing does something. I really don't. I mean, you know, a lot of times, and it wouldn't matter even if the police got involved or whatever, I know for a fact it probably would not go, it would not benefit me, you know. And I've considered it. It's like, what am I going to do? Oh, well, uh, he called me a bitch and then ran me down with every nasty thing he could think to say. And yes, that is emotional abuse. And I told him, well, I'm going to record you. And he said, well, record how you are too. And I said, well, yeah, that's a part of it. You know, but it's the first time I have ever said this to him. Um, I called him a fucker last night. I said, I'm sick of your fat ass shit, I think I said. Something like that, you know. So, anyway, I thought I was done talking about it, but I guess I'm not because... It is upsetting and disturbing, you know. And I know some people will be like all judgy on me and stuff. Well, you know, I'm I'm not making any excuses for how I feel when I get pushed that hard. I just won't. And I'm not going to even try and excuse myself because I'm not sorry. I don't even want to be sorry. This is unacceptable. You know, I do know there's people that know what's going on. You know, it's like um, they just know that these type of people, narcissists, they get with people like me because they saw things that they wanted. And um, for me, I think it was because he knew I had two sons that I had to take care of. And that I, he saw that I was taking care of them. In fact, it goes back to, um, he said this often, that he didn't remember when he first met me that I was working, but him and my ex would go out so-called looking for jobs. And I'd come home from work. I'd pick up my kids from school and come home and, they'd be doing whatever. And I was even able to borrow him money to get his driver's license back and put his truck back on the road, you know. But magically, he doesn't remember these things, you know, but that's a lie. He knew full well he was getting with somebody that would not give up in life because she loved her sons. And, and he knew that when he met me. And he, along with the kid's dad, did everything they possibly could to destroy my son's chances from being healthy men. That's a fact. And so, I mean, forgiveness really only goes so far, you know. And really, my sons are quite a bit like that, too. So, yeah. 
I think one of them tried to call yesterday, but I didn't answer the phone. Doug asked me what um, the prefix was for a, a certain state, and I said I think that's what it is, but I'm not talking to anybody. But who I'm talking to out here, I think is starting to realize a lot of you now, um, if you're like 50 or so, maybe even closer to my age, you might even have a, a long experience with some of these people like that. Whether there's drugs or alcohol involved or if they're like that when they're sober too. So, in fact, when they do something that's vile when they're sober, that's almost even more disturbing, you know? So anyway, and I know for a fact if he could, he has tried to stop me from making videos and he just can't. And I know it pisses him off. What kind of creep would want somebody they're close to getting out in front of the whole world and talking about relationships, particularly theirs, you know? So when we do this, and there are more than just me out here doing this, <coughs> maybe one other <laughs> because um, that I know of has to be a humiliating thing for them to understand that their actions led us to expose their flaws. And because we're talking about our own too anyway. So, I mean, Maybe I'm flawed because I don't accept somebody treating me dirty when I don't deserve it. No, I'm not going to accept it. That's not a flaw. Like I say, forgiveness only. And that's one thing Lionel looked up the word forgiveness and he was surprised that it did not mean what he thought it meant. And I was not surprised because I've been telling people that that word is not what you think it is and it does not mean what you think it means so um i would say probably listen to lionel or look it up but um i like the way he had to just it's like rewriting a part of your life when you learn the definition of a word <laughs> you know Dang, is that right? Wow. You know? So. Yeah. And he's a good one to follow anyway because uh, he's got it together. I mean, there's some things we don't see eye to eye on, and I never will. But that doesn't take my, I mean, if you think about the people that you follow out in this world and who you might admire and why you might admire them. Um, I would say the reason why I admire people is because I know they have God in their hearts. Now, there's some that I know definitely don't and there was one of them the other night that I literally had to shut off because it was starting to sound too much like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's like, um, like you can go into a lounge and have like a nice cocktail, or you can go into a dive and have a three two or three percent alcohol beer. You know, see my difference as opposed to um like four or five percent wherever you are it used to be called weak or strong beer you know but um it made me feel like i had just walked into a dive bar you know it's like no thank you you know
probably not everybody in a dive bar is a dive personality to go along with it. But then on the other hand, you could say, well, Jesus sat with the sinners. Yeah, that was last time. This time it's not quite the same. And the people that are meant to come together will come together and already are the ones that are opposing that. That's who they are. And I'm convinced of that. There's no changing people. Um, you know, being, being a good person versus a great person. Anybody can be good. But what does it take to be great? And I won't listen to anybody that tells me that I'm not because I know my virtues. I know my integrity. And when I encounter people that don't have that, I don't listen to their opinions. I listen to people that I think are like-minded. And even if they're younger, and I could see where I might have been just about the same at that age, too. Then I'll, I'll listen and hope that maybe some more enlightenment can go into a younger person's life so they can not just see things how I see them, but understand why I am like I am and why I act and say and do the things that I do how I do them. And that is the psychological war that we're fighting. And I am a warrior, and I've been trained for this, you know. But it doesn't really make it any easier. Like I told them, you know, um, I didn't believe that um, he really wanted to be a nice person. I don't believe that at all. He enjoys being a creep because it gives him a, a sense of power of being different. If it's um, something he can say that's off or adverse, he knows when he's saying and doing those things because he wouldn't do them in front of me when he first met me. He knew. And when he first meets somebody else, you know, it's even when he was doing business dealings on the phone or something, um, and I'd have to telepathically tell him, tone it down or you're going to wreck the whole deal, you know. Um, because you can't talk down to people and work with them, you know. And so I think he saw um, some, some business abilities of mine that, not only had he ad adapted, but used me for in that respect, too. Because, yeah, um, I wasted a lot of years helping somebody that wouldn't do anything. He goes, he goes, you wouldn't even pick me up. And I said, no, you have never tried to even pick me up. I have picked him up, <laughs> you know. I caught him out of a tree and broke my arm and my shoulder. I had um, three different injuries in the space of an area like that because of him. And uh, he said I should have let him fall. When I said, well, you didn't care that I did that for you, well, you should have just let me fall. So then when I just shut the door I left them all. and I did do it actually to keep the kitties in because if the one gets out with her bad legs she'll probably die and the other one he won't go out but he was wondering what Doug was doing face down on the steps he was on his knees I mean it wasn't like he was dying even though he said he was you know but and who knows maybe he was close to it I don't know if you really don't take care of yourself physically, well, you are closer to death. So, and the older you get, too. So, I don't know. I guess that part, I can't say for certain. All I can say is I was faced with a dilemma that 
I don't think I'm prepared to face again, you know? So I'm going to just document this and I, um, in reference to if something bad happens in that type of situation, the only thing I can do is try and protect myself because I don't know that I would have anybody um, actually as far as um, like a character witness. I mean, there's a lot of witnesses that won't speak on Doug's character because they're afraid. You know, they suck up to him because if they don't, he'll do something. Remember I told you he was going to do something? Well, that's what he does. So, and it's weird, too, because... Um, other night I started playing music because he'll get in this depressive type uh, I call it like a node <laughs> like so, like a thought hanging off him it, you can almost feel it it's almost like a cyst on him that you can see that needs to be surgically removed but He's not going in for the surgery, you know. So I turn music on and I try and um, chain the, change the atmosphere. But that doesn't always work either. But at least I played music long enough where it did make him more tired, where he wasn't dad's combative, you know. So I do try to do that. But I was... Um, Sneak attack surprise. See, he can hear in the shop our electricity um, because of the way it's out in the country. It's set up a little different, but when the pump comes on, the light will flash, and you can, and that that indicates old wiring too. But when he's out there, he can tell when I'm taking a shower, so he knew when he was coming in that I was going to be wet. And when you have hair that long and it's wet and it was cold on my back and everything, it's like, great. And I did try to pick him up too, you know. But he knew what he was doing. It was premeditated. So. So I don't know if you go through those uh, crazy making things with anybody you're around, but it is crazy, you know. So let's just put say that although I w so said that I haven't done anything for him. I actually have, um, I do have physical proof that that's a goddamn lie. So, he has the proof just within his soul. And what a shameful thing that even when his foot was broken, I, for a year, did everything, everything, keeping the shop heated, taking wood in there, keeping the house heated and cleaned, getting all the groceries, and that's just not the first time, you know. It's, and I thought it was like kind of a shared situation, but, you know, the time, and I could go on and on, but the times that I did help him, I wish I hadn't. I wish I had left his fat ass there with a broken foot and walked out. Yeah, he had one of them black boots, one of them boot thingies on his leg. And I even showed him how to take care of things a little better than what they did at the clinic. And I mean, my knowledge of things is just, he doesn't deserve any of it. So that's a fact. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm, I'm considering on starting a GoFundMe 
so I can get a motor home and just get in it and go. So that's that's um right now I can't think of anything else to do. And then maybe I could find a little job somewhere and support myself for a, about a year and a half, you know. Of course, I mean, the work that, and I can prove to, see, he tries to make it like my name's not on the house, my name's not on the company, but that's not the way it works in marriage anyway, whether he wants to actually do the physical deed, which I had asked him to do before, but now I'm to the point where, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I sure don't deserve nothing, you know. So, and that I know he just hopes I just walk out and let him, let him be, you know, instead of putting strains on his life, you know. Oh, it's just so overwhelming to be a decent man. It's got to be. I don't really see it happening a lot. Babies are just overwhelmed, some of them, you know, moms too. And with the way men act, I could see a lot of moms being very 